Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another virtual coffee chat with Lewis for Think Remote. I am Lewis, obviously, and today on Over Coffee, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of replicating the office in remote work. Happy sipping. Today is Thursday, or as I learned from Animal Crossing, Friday Eve. So let's talk a bit about uh, a tweet that I saw, <laughs> that, that I saw yesterday that uh, drove me to think about, well, to feel all, all sorts of complicated emotions. Uh, this tweet was by at Uju Anya. Uh, I believe it's pronounced that way. Apologies if I am messing it up somehow. And uh, she tweeted the following. Let me read it to you. <clears throat> My child got sent to Zoom detention for not paying attention in Zoom fourth grade. Email said, here's the link to access the room to serve detention. And then she goes on to say, I swear I'm trying so hard to take this life seriously. You and me both, Anya, you and me both. Now, what is this, right? So it, it, it's not, not, I mean, <laughs> the kids are having Zoom classes, which I, I mean, I can understand why the people uh, why the people managing schools think this is this is the way to go. We'll get to it a bit later. I can understand that decision, right? I, I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. At, at the end of the day, they're trying to use Zoom as a virtual space to replicate the classroom. I, I, I don't fully agree with the reasoning, but I can see the reasoning. But then, you know, no, detention, you don't pay attention. Well, it's hard to pay attention on Zoom, much harder than in person. Right? I mean, it's my job and I find it hard. So what about the kid in fourth grade? It's that's just, I mean, it's just not reasonable. And then you need to replicate the detention, right? On Zoom as well. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous, but guess what? People are still doing it in, in work settings as well. Look, let's, it's time to have a talk about what makes sense to replicate from the office, from the regular office in a remote setting and what doesn't, right? What's the problem here? The problem is that the school is not using Zoom as a means of communication. They are using it as a virtual space. Well, the problem is that virtual, is that spaces have a lot of characteristics that Zoom cannot provide, that it's not built to provide. A space is three-dimensional in nature. That means uh, not just looking three-dimensional, but also three-dimensional audio, right? Even the, the air you breathe is a part of it. It, had, it adds texture, right? Zoom is meant to communicate. It's, it is not meant to simulate a virtual space. So of course, people's attention will not be the same. Uh, I, I would say that I can pay attention to a Zoom call, you know, like 30 minutes at a time. That's the reason why these videos are five to 10 minutes maximum. And I actually cringe when a video reaches the 10 minute mark because I think that actually seven is the best. Uh, there's a place for longer conversations, right? That's uh, when it's not a, a monologue and when it's an actual conversation. For example, I have a podcast that sometimes runs up to an hour in length and that's fine because I have a guest. So there's some back and forth and also it's audio only, it's not video, but looking at someone talking at you for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour or more, that's just insane. It doesn't work, right? There's an idea that we can grasp those kinds of things through video because we are a video centric society, TV, TV and movies account for a massive amount of our, uh, of our entertainment, especially if you account for other interactive medium like, like video games. But that's, those things have a different dynamic, right? It's not the same. It's not just someone talking at you. That's, that's by the way, why I feel challenged. I personally feel challenged when I'm doing online courses and the courses are in video. I find that I learn a lot, more, a lot better. I can focus a lot better if I'm not trying to look at video all the time. When does video make sense? When you have something to show, right? Or when you have, or when you have to want to build trust and rapport in short bursts of communication, right? Like I'm doing right now, it's a short burst of communication. So uh, it doesn't absolutely make sense to do that. What does make sense? Instead of creating a virtual office in Zoom and holding all those meetings and yada, yada, what does make sense translating is probably your processes. If they work, 
right? If you have processes, let's say workflow, right? If you have a workflow that used to work in an office and that produced good results for you, there's a, a likelihood that you can, uh, there's a decent likelihood that you can translate that relatively unchanged, you know, to remote probably. I mean, likely you can optimize it a bit. You can make, you can make it smoother for everyone involved, right? You can make it more, you can make it use better in better way, the digital tools that are available, but workflows you can usually translate, not spaces. Why would you translate a space? We don't have the technology to do that. Some could argue, that even if we had the technology to do that, it wouldn't be optimal. Uh, that's that's kind of, uh, I mean, that that's something that I think that the the, the proof has yet to come. You st we still need to try it out, but it's a, a moot point because we don't have the technology to perfectly replicate the virtual space. A 2D screen with talking heads is in no way the same thing as being in an office or in a classroom together. So why make it so, right? Why try to needlessly replicate these things? We need to, it's a new world. And as the people doing remote right now, we need to come up with new solutions. When a child doesn't pay attention in Zoom fourth grade, what's the solution? I would bet that the solution is to find a better way to give classes. But if you do feel the need to change the behavior of a child, certainly Zoom detention is not the way to go, right? There probably needs to be another program in place, something, something you know, a, a different way. Maybe, maybe the answer is to have a video call with someone, right? But certainly not the detention room. So anyway, that's that's me off of my, I'm going, getting off of my soapbox. Here's the things that you need to know about remote work. Don't try to blindly replicate the office, especially when it comes to creating virtual spaces. You cannot create a virtual, the equivalent of a space in a video call. That doesn't make sense anyway. You look at it, do try to pick up and optimize workflows that that worked for you in the office and think how you can translate them, you know, virtually using the tools that you have by all means. But when it comes to interaction among humans, you're going to need to find new solutions. Oh, well, I, I was so, so caught into all this discussion that I barely even had time to drink. Sorry, let's, let's sip a bit more. It's nice and uh, well, if you enjoyed this conversation, I apologize for the complete lack of coffee or cats today. Uh, I will try to make it better next time. If you enjoyed the conversation, please like, share, subscribe, and head on over to thinkremote.com. There's some neat stuff for you there. This was Lewis with Virtual Coffee Chat for Think Remote. See you tomorrow. <laughs>